Today I want to show you something amazing. This is absolutely beautiful. It is one of the greatest calculus results I've ever seen. And I wasn't even evaluating some integral or infinite series or even a differential equation. I wasn't, I wasn't even solving a differential equation. I was just playing around with the wire stress definition of the gamma function. And I came across this beautiful result that is just goaded. So it all starts off with how wire stress defines the gamma function. Now he defines the reciprocal of the gamma function that is 1 by gamma x as x times e to the gamma x, where lowercase gamma is the euler mascheroni constant, times the infinite product over the positive integers k of 1 plus x by k times e to the negative x by k. Now, using logarithms, we can write the left-hand side as log 1 by gamma x, which is, of course, equal to negative log gamma x, because if you reciprocate the argument of a logarithm, you get an extra negative sign. And on the right, I have the logarithm of a product, which can be broken down into the sum of individual logarithms. So I have log x plus log e to the gamma x, and the logarithm and the exponential are inverse functions, so they cancel out pretty nicely, and I'm left with gamma x plus the infinite product turns into an infinite sum over the positive integers k of log 1 plus x by k times e to the negative x by k. So what I want next is to take this log x term to the left and factor out the negative sign. So I have log gamma x plus log x. And using the properties of the logarithm, you can write this as log x times gamma x. And using the recursion formula for the gamma function, we know that this equals log gamma x plus 1 with a negative sign, of course. And on the right, I'm left with gamma x plus the sum over k of log 1 plus x to the x by k uh, plus log e to the negative x by k, which of course turns out to be negative x by k. And I'm going to multiply the equation by negative 1 to get rid of the negative sign on the left-hand side. And this implies that I have log gamma x plus 1 equal to negative gamma x and some adjustments over here, some rearrangements. So I still have a positive sign outside, uh, the sum over the positive integers k of x by k minus the logarithm of 1 plus x by k. Now this logarithm term can be expressed quite nicely as an infinite series. And how exactly do we do that? Well, recall that the reciprocal of 1 plus x can be written as the sum over the positive integers n of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times x to the n minus 1, provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1, which is perfect for the purpose of this video. So if you integrate this, you get log 1 plus x on the left, and on the right you have the sum over the positive integers n of negative 1 to the n minus 1, times x to the n divided by n. And all that's left is to replace x by x by k, and you have this k to the n term in the denominator. So this implies that log gamma x plus 1 equals negative gamma x plus the sum over the positive integers k of x by k minus the sum over the positive integers n of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times x to the n divided by k to the n times n. A pretty useful thing we can do here is single out the n equals 1 term from the sum, because that means on the right hand side you have negative gamma x plus the sum over the positive integers k of x by k minus, once you plug in n equals 1, you get x by k minus the sum over the positive integer starting at 2 of all of this stuff. So the x by k terms cancel out nicely, and this implies that log gamma x plus 1 equals negative gamma x minus the sum, the double sum that is, over the positive integers k starting at 1 and the positive integers n starting at 2 of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times x to the n divided by k to the n times n. And it's pretty easy to verify 
that the double sum you have here is convergent. And because it's convergent, we can switch up the order of the summation operators. So you have negative gamma x minus the sum over n and k of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times x to the n divided by k to the n times n. And you can just slip out of the summation with respect to k operator all those terms independent of the k variable. So you have negative gamma x plus the sum over n of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times x to the n divided by n times the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k to the n, which we recognize as the wonderful Riemann zeta function evaluated at n. So this implies that we have a really cool looking result, but we're not done yet of log gamma x plus 1 equal to negative gamma x plus the sum over the positive integer starting at 2 of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times x to the n times zeta n divided by n. And all that's left is to plug in a nice value of x. Now let's see what would be a nice value of x. Well, you probably would have guessed by now, given the structure of the equation in front of you with the gamma function and the presence of pi in the thumbnail, that means a nice value of x would be negative one half. Because that means on the left-hand side, you have gamma log gamma one half, and on the right, you have gamma by two, and there should not be a plus sign there. Wait, let me see, yeah. There's a minus sign over here that I just completely forgot about. So sorry about that, my bad. And you have now on the right hand side, gamma by two minus the sum over the positive integers n starting at two of negative one to the n times x to the n. Now x is negative one half, which can be written as one half times negative one. So you have one half to the n times negative one to the n, and wait a second, you have this negative one raised to the n minus one. Okay, cool. And negative one to the n minus one times negative one to the n means that you have negative one to the two n minus one. Two n minus one is an odd number. So you always have negative one, and that cancels out the negative sign outside. So yeah, there is a plus sign here, but now it's mathematically justified. Anyway. So you have uh, one half to the n times zeta n divided by n, which is a pretty cool looking infinite series that I'm gonna call here s. And on the left hand side, I have log gamma one half. Gamma one half is the square root of pi. And gamma by two can be written as log e to the gamma by two. And I'm writing the infinite series here as s. So some rearrangement is in order. This implies that s equals log square root pi minus log e to the gamma by two, which of course can be written as the square root of e to the gamma. And using the properties of the logarithm, I have log square root pi by e to the gamma. Again, using the properties of the logarithm, I can write this as one half of the logarithm of pi divided by e to the gamma, which is just beautiful. I mean, this is gorgeous. And we can even tweak it further. Recall that the sum s was in fact the sum over the positive integers starting at two of, wait a second though, no, it was a, yeah, zeta n times one half to the n. So I can just write this as two to, the, two to the n times n in the denominator. So if I multiply both sides by two, then I get two to the n minus one downstairs on the left. And I'm left with log pi divided by e to the gamma. Again, this is just gorgeous. And what if I just be a bit more extravagant and exponentiate everything? Well, in that case, the right-hand side is the gorgeous result of pi divided by e to the Euler Mascheroni constant. This was awesome, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.